Hi friends, do you like the Xeno series? Do you want to support me? Consider checking out my merch in the link below in the description and maybe you'll find something you really like. All support is much appreciated and will allow me to make more videos faster. I love you all, so let's get into it. Shulk might be the protagonist of Xenoblade 1 and have access to the legendary Minato, but in Xenoblade 2, two hunting knives can manage to even outclass him. Today on the Blade Guide series we have Fiora, one of the most disgustingly broken blades in the entire game. The second of the two SS tier blades in my opinion, and just all around a complete monster. Fiora is the second guest character from the first Xenoblade game to be added as DLC for this game, and let me tell you, no thought was put into balancing this character. This character is absolutely insane and can just tear through the entire game just by existing. In this video, we're going to see just why that is. We're going to take a look at Fiora, discuss all of her strengths and lack of weaknesses, and see how to use her most effectively. If you enjoy all my guide content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help out so much and I will love you forever. Let's get into it. So Fiora is a clone weapon using knives. She is a clone of the Twin Ring class of weapons, and you might think this would make her a decent option on Nia since Dromark is her exclusive blade and the only rare Twin Ring blade. But Fiora is actually not good on Nia compared to other options, and she functions much better on Morag and Rex. In fact, she is insanely broken on both. We'll get into why that is in just a bit, but typically Rex and Morag are good with rings and ring clones. So starting off, Fiora is a healer class blade. That's what the game says at the very least, but this is extremely misleading. Technically, she does heal and can do it decently well, but that is not what you use Fiora for. Her auto attack stat can reach 1472 with the Tachyon ship, which is the highest among healer blades in the entire game. Her block rate is really low overall, but her critical hit rate is the highest in the entire game, tying Rock and Corvin, able to reach up to 60% with the Moon Matter core chip. Although it's actually even more ridiculous than that, and I don't actually recommend using the Moon Matter core chip, and we'll discuss why soon. Her defenses are only 10% physical and 15% ether, so nothing too amazing, but honestly, it doesn't really matter at all. Her stat mod is 15% strength, which is decent enough, and her cooldown is 5, giving her some of the best availability in the game. Let's take a look at her skill tree. Fiora's first skill is Unwavering Courage. This increases damage by 20% for each enemy in battle at level 1, rising up to 40% at level 5, and maxing out at 250%. Okay, this is a standard enough skill, giving her 40% extra damage basically all the time, and giving her nice additional damage when there are multiple enemies in a fight. This can make her hit quite hard and establish herself as one of the highest damage healer blades with only this skill just behind Cross Set. Her other two skills don't even matter, she's basically already second place with this in multi-enemy fights. She'll be very useful in those for clearing out enemies faster thanks to her damage boost, and the 40% at all times is already pretty nice to have. However, this is by far her worst skill. No, I am not joking. Fiora's second skill is Explosion of Energy. This increases her damage every time she deals a critical hit by 5% at level 1, rising up to 15% at level 5, and capping out at 300%. Remember when I said Fiora had the highest critical hit rate tier? Yeah, this skill will stack up insanely fast and will give you some absolutely ridiculous damage. The ring auto attack combo on Morag and Rex has like 5 hits each, and if you crit all 5 of those before using any arts, that's already 75% damage boost already without even using an art, and every multi-hit and every art you use will increase this faster and further. You can easily get some insane added to damage totals on Fiora that hardly any other blade can match. 300% is a huge amount for a single blade with just one skill, and the only real weakness is losing it if you swap off Fiora and having to get it back when you swap back to her. It's one of those that resets when you swap. Honestly though, that is a very small price to pay, and you won't even have to swap off Fiora anyway. Great skill, and is only made even greater by her last skill. Warrior Va Valkyrie will increase party critical hit rate by 20% at level 1, and 40% at level 5. Now let's talk about critical hit rate and this skill for a moment. So one thing you may not know about critical hit rate is that it's affected by level of affinity. Base critical hit rate is multiplied by 1.3 when you are at max affinity in combat, giving you a 30% boost to this stat. So for instance, if Fiora had a 60% critical hit rate when using the Moon Matter Core Chip, this would be 78% at max affinity. This skill, on the other hand, is an additive effect. What that means is instead of multiplying current critical hit rate by 1.4, it just straight up adds 40% onto the total and that would boost that 78% to 118%. Having over 100% critical hit rate doesn't do anything for you, but you get the example. 40% additive critical hit rate is broken, can make Fiora easily hit 100% with a lot of setups, 
and is super helpful for boosting lower critical hit rate blades like shield hammers or cannons to much higher numbers. You can boost a cannon's low 20% critical hit rate to 60%, for instance. That is a massive boost and some amazing party support in addition to just being a super broken skill on Fiora herself. For reference, Mithra has a skill that increases her own critical hit rate by only 15%. This is 25% more than that, and it affects the entire party. Broken skill, and even more broken considering it's on Fiora. And before talking about her specials, I just need to exemplify how broken this is, so just bear with me. So Fiora's bonus effect with the Tachyon Courtship is increasing critical damage by 25%, because why wouldn't it be? Normally with this Courtship, Fiora will get a 41% critical hit rate, which is 53% at max affinity, and 93% with the additional 40% added. And she gets critical damage coming off a base 93% critical hit rate that increases her damage further because of how good her additives are. And if that's not enough, she has an art on every driver with a critical recharge effect. In the case of Morag, this is Universe Flicker, a very fast art with a very good damage ratio. Rex has Screw Edge, a 4-hit art, basically guaranteeing you get at least one crit with another very good damage ratio. Oh, and both these arts have good area of effect as well. Everything about this blade synergizes perfectly to create a damage monster who is only matched by other blades in very specific circumstances. Fiora can do this all the time and is probably the best universal DPS blade in the game because of it, despite being a healer. Her skills and arts allow her to be a complete monster as an attacker. But what about her specials? Well, I suppose we can talk about them now. Truth be told, Fiora's specials are probably the weakest aspect about her, but that's just because everything else is so overwhelming. Her specials make her a more proper healer, and I'll try to move through them pretty quickly. Fiora's level 1 special is Hidden Thorn. This is a 2-hit physical special that is very fast. Not as fast as just art spamming, but fast nonetheless. It has an okay damage ratio of 350 at level 1, 470 at level 5, and 504 at max affinity. It will spawn 2 health potions on hit, so you can finally pretend to be a healer when using Fiora, I suppose. Decent option, but not as good as her other options. Fiora's level 2 special is Power Smash. This is a 6-hit physical base special with another alright damage ratio of 420 at level 1, 580 at level 5, and 609 at max affinity. It's pretty dang fast, and with 6 hits, it manages to be a nice special to use in chain attacks and gives her some use in those solely because of that. It's very easy to get the 6 hits of damage cap with Fiora in chains. It also has a decent area of effect radius for hitting multiple enemies at a time. It is also a full heal because it restores 100% of critical damage as health to the entire party, and you're pretty much always critting with Fiora. Good job, Fiora the Healer Blade. Fiora's level 3 special is Lacerate. This is another 2-hit physical special of about average speed. Its damage ratio isn't that impressive either, being 525 at level 1, 690 at level 5, and 714 at max affinity. That said, it is another full party heal since it will restore damage dealt to the entire party, but overall it's not a very good special option to use, none of her specials really have damaging bonus effects. They basically just serve to set up blade combos or heal. If there is anything to note, this special does pierce defense, so it can at the very least do that extra damage. Fiora's level 4 special is Butterfly Step. Now this special is probably her best option for a damage special. It has a very high damage ratio of 1325, which is among the best for level 4s, and it also pierces enemy defense, so it always does the full amount of damage. Its bonus effect is again healing the entire party for 50% of the damage dealt, which is again basically a full heal, so you can use it whenever you're in a pinch and about to get hit by a dangerous attack. And as always, it freezes driver combos, allowing for fusion combo setups, should you even need to set those up with Fiora. All around, her specials are good for a healer, but given everything else Fiora offers, they're probably going to mostly be an afterthought. She really is just that good at pumping out insane art damage. For setup, I already mentioned it, but run Tachyon Chip. Critical damage is so good and you have a 93% critical hit rate at max affinity anyway, and if you really want the consistency of 100%, you can run a critical up aux core like I am here. It's much more worth it to get the 25% critical damage and higher auto attack than it is to ever run the moon matter. For other aux cores, affinity max attack is always great and outdoor attack is always great. Night vision is a decent option to get rid of accuracy RNG and because she has such high damage additives anyway. For accessories, it goes without saying, but Crimson Headband is so good on her. She has huge added to damage total, so boosting critical damage, which is basically guaranteed, with her will also increase her damage by so much thanks to it being an independent multiplier. Speaking of independent multipliers, Noise Dampener is also amazing since Fiora can pump out massive art damage, increasing the damage ratio of those arts further will make her hit extremely hard. The last lot is up to you, honestly. Abysk Mask is the risky damage option. 
Omega Drive is broken for party meter and chain attack spamming. Burst Symbol is good for chain attack damage. Divine Van Braces or Loincloth on Rex is a safe option. Avant Guard Metal is good for always being healthy while pumping out damage since she will always crit. And honestly, pretty much anything works on Fiora. She's broken. Her pouch items, Art Recharge for the Art Spammer sounds good, so let's take a look at how to use Fiora practically. Okay, let's just do our little normal warm-up here against Tyran and Titan Kuridil here. Just kind of show off the basic abilities of the blade here. I'm, sh I'm sure we'll be able to show off a lot in this battle. I'm just going to start using a Universe Flicker with Morag, that Critical Recharge art I was talking about earlier. And this is normal mode. You're able to see that a bit earlier here. So, um, yeah, this is Fiora. We're going to be showing her off. And that's it. The fight's over. 21 seconds. Not too bad. See, so, so Fiora is actually a healer blade because she keeps the party healthy by killing the enemy before they can do anything. And yeah, that's just kind of the power of Universe Flicker. I'm going to keep showing it off in a bit of a different setup here. The AoE, you can really see it well in this battle that we're about to show off here. So yeah, Universe Flicker, really broken art. The area of effect is amazing. The damage it can deal is amazing. This is a Bring Your Chaos challenge, by the way. Um, Fiercest Faction on Bring Your Chaos, one of the... Uh, record strategies actually for it. It's actually the current record for the strategy, I believe. And you can just kind of see the just massive amount of damage that Fiora is just able to put out with the Universe Flicker and just the AoE, the critical recharge. It's such a fast art. It has such a huge damage ratio. The amount of damage you can do with it is just insane. You're seeing I'm able to hit some damage cap hits here with it. it it's just, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. With the noise dampener, with the, um... Crimson Headband, as long as you're stacking those multipliers, getting all those critical hits, Fiora will output more DPS than pretty much everyone else. There are certain very specific situations other blades can get more DPS than her, but just overall, Fiora is just universally always going to have amazing DPS. It is worth noting she does actually have a flat healing art in Morag, so even if you do get low on health, you can actually heal with the flat healing heart. You don't really have to use it that often, but it is there if you need it, so just the fact that you have the ability to do such an amazing amount of damage with this art and still be able to just heal if you really need it is incredible. It makes Fiora be able to function as effectively all three of the roles. She can do the DPS herself, she can heal because she's effectively created to be a healer, and then because of her healing, she can function as a tank because she has the ability to just heal all the time. So, yeah, it, she's absolutely ridiculous. We've probably seen enough Universe Flicker. I just wanted to show off this last challenge where we're doing some more AoE and killing Jin and Malos really quickly with uh, Fiora and some evasion strategy at the same time. Fiora can pretty much just fit on any team, and you can just spam arch pretty well. I'm going to show off Fiora on Rex now after this. I think Fiora is probably a bit better on Morag overall, just because Universe Flicker really is just that broken. But Screw Edge is another really broken art. It's not as apparently obvious, and it's not going to be used for, like, DPS, but Screw Edge is basically four critical hits you can get instantly, and it's really fast. You can charge up Party Meter extremely quickly, like I did here, like, right at the start of battle, and you can use, like, really quick chain attacks, or you can spam chain attacks with it or something like that. And that allows her to have some really good use in some other types of party setups besides DPS as well, just because of her really high critical hit rate. Her ability to buff the critical hit rate of ally party members is also very beneficial. You can actually see it right there, with uh, zombies basically getting critical hits despite being a cannon in that chain attack, which is what allowed us to finish that challenge. And now I'm just going to show off our Danny and Kirtle on normal mode, just because this is a decent enough challenge to show off um, the Screw Edge chain attack spamming strategy here, I think. So you can already see Screw Edge AoE is just uh, annihilating these enemies, and um, we were able to kill the Musk really fast with um, Fiora and the Noise Dampener and everything. And this is kind of the reason that she's not as good on Nia. Um, Nia's critical hit recharge is not nearly as good as Morag's and Rex's, and Zeke's critical hit heart, heart on with Fiora is really bad, so definitely stick to using it in Morag and Rex. Those are definitely the two best options. What I'm doing here is kind of showing off a chain attack spam strategy that Fiora can really allow you to do because of her huge critical or huge critical hit rate and just the ability to build up party meters so fast because of it. So Screw Edge is just like probably the best art in the game for building up party meter extremely quickly. Probably even better than Corvin with his ability to specifically get party meter when he gets critical hits. I would honestly say Fiora can probably be better than that, especially if you use an Omega Drive on her. So you can see we're already almost back up to full party meter just this quickly. I am uh, was trying to wait for a special to get charged up, that's the only reason I stopped using Screw Edge there. Because I wanted to get that off before doing anything else, because I was trying to set up a Mega Explosion so I could end it in a faster chain attack than I ended up actually doing here. But you're able to just see here just like kind of the power of Fiora in general here. We're getting all these damage caps on the chain attack without even um, having any kind of fusion combo setup or anything. 
And it, she's just so powerful once you get those additive stacked, once you got those multipliers with the headband and the everything. Her specials are definitely yes, less useful than her arts overall, but that doesn't make her specials bad either. They definitely have some uses for um, healing and keeping yourself healthy and everything like that. That is something to keep in mind, something that can be pretty useful here. I don't have spike defense, and that's one of the reasons I'm like collecting these health potions, just to make sure I'm not actually falling too low on health. Like I would be here if I wasn't really careful. I think I end up Shane attacking here in just a second, because he's going to use um, the um, Rampage Train here. And I didn't want that to one-shot my characters or anything. I was trying to get the Mega Explosion off before this happened, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. Getting the Mega Explosion off would allow me to just kill him in one chain attack here, and I wouldn't have had to waste a bit more time with this section of the fight, but not really a big deal. You can kind of just see how good um, Fewer is in general already. There, This is really all there is to it. Crazy damage, the ability to heal party, meter, party members, um, charge up party meter really fast. Utility with being able to support party members by giving them extra critical hit rate, which can be really good for damage on other party members. She's just really, really amazing all around. Like, she is really amazing all around. And we've already got Chain Attack back up again. I just want to quickly show off you can hit damage cap with all six hits of her level 2, even despite the fact that I didn't really have to here, since we're just going to destroy him anyway before we even get to round 2 of this Chain Attack. Universe Flicker's broken DPS, Screw Edge is another really broken art, and Fiora just all around is one of the most amazing blades in the game. Easy S, S rank blade. Definitely up there with Cutie Pie for sure. I think she's definitely about that same tier. I still think Cutie Pie is a bit better overall just because of that break art and her just versatility and ability to do basically everything, but Fiora is very, very powerful. And honestly, in my opinion, she's extremely fun to use as well. All the constant critical hits and just everything. that It's really a fun playstyle, and I really like it a lot. But yeah, Fjord is absolutely insane, as you might expect. I do find it very funny that she outclasses Shulk and is just one of the absolute most broken blades in this game. Um, and yeah, that's going to basically cover it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something about Fiora and about the game in general from watching this. And see why using our Amorag is actually really good, because I know most people like to use her on Rex and have uh, been perpetuating the fact that Screw Edge is really good. But Universe Flicker is also amazing, and she can hit some amazing DPS with her. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and support me any other way you can, because I do appreciate it so much. And with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and have a blessed day.